Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to our uh, daily devotional for uh, for today. Uh, today we're going to stick with the Easter theme a little bit and look at a passage from Luke 23. That's uh, kind of funny, after I did the Good Friday sermon, I told Kelly, you know, if I get to preach a Good Friday service again, I think maybe I'd do something uh, with the criminals being crucified with Jesus. Uh, so since it's a part of our reading today, that's what we're going to look at uh, for just a couple of minutes. So Luke chapter 23, we're going to look at verses 32 and 33, and then we'll skip down to verse 39 and read uh, the couple of verses after that. So Luke chapter 23, uh, starting in verse 32, it says, two others who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place that is called the skull, there they crucified him and the criminals one on his right and one on his left. And then if you skip down to verse 39, one of the criminals who were hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. It's interesting the different contrast that Luke shows in the people involved in this moment in, uh, in history. We have Pilate and Herod only concerned with themselves and Jesus giving his life for the world. There's the religious leaders angrily pushing for the murder of, uh, of this innocent man. And Jesus saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. We have one criminal on the cross mocking Jesus out of his arrogance, while the other submits to Jesus in humility. It seems like all of these contrasts have at their root a choice between our own way and God's way. Now, this is a choice that stretches back uh, to the Garden of Eden, uh, from the very b beginning of time. Uh, and it's reflected in our uh, readings of Judges right now, as we hear again and again in the book of Judges, and everyone did what was right in their own eyes. So these two criminals are hanging on crosses next to Jesus. They've been witnesses to all of the same things, but they have very different reactions. One sarcastically calls out to Jesus, if you're really who you say you are, why don't you just save us? But the other criminal asks Jesus to remember him. It's interesting because in a lot of ways, uh, their words are the same, right? They're, they're sort of saying the same thing, uh, Jesus, save us. Uh, but the difference uh, is in verse 40 and 41. The second criminal fears God. Uh, and we know this because of uh, three things. I mean, one, he, it says he, he fears God. He says, don't you fear God? He acknowledges this, uh, th this greatness of God and of what God can do. Two, he confesses his unworthiness, right? The criminal says, uh, we deserve this punishment that we're receiving uh, for the things that we've done in our lives. And three, he clings to Jesus. He says, Jesus doesn't deserve this punishment. He's innocent. And the man asked Jesus to be the thing that makes him worthy of the kingdom. So throughout Luke 23, but in particular with these two criminals, we see that each one of us has to choose who we will follow. Joshua in our reading last week says, choose this day uh, whom you will serve. And, uh, and he says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And this is the challenge we face each day, even in each decision we make. Who am I following today? Am I choosing my way or do I fear God and submit to his way? Now, this is in the big decisions we make each day, and it's in the small choices we make from moment to moment. Do we trust that what he says is best for us? And do we choose to follow what he says because we trust him? Pastor Nathan and I were talking about this today, uh, but this is one of the reasons why reading the scriptures like we're doing together, is such an important thing. The more we read the scriptures, the more we immerse ourselves in them, then the more saturated we become with the words and wisdom of God. And then the more our hearts and our minds 
are shaped by his words. And when this happens, the more we will find the desire to choose to follow God, the ability to actually follow God, and joy in each step we take while following him. So maybe two questions you can consider as you reflect uh, on this passage and even talk about it uh, with a friend or, or with your family. Uh, question number one, what are some evidences in your life of choosing God? What are some evidences in your life of choosing God? What are some things you could look at or other people could look at in your life and say, this is this way in their life uh, because you've chosen to follow God? And then the second question, what's an area of your life where you haven't been choosing to follow God, but you would like to? What's an area of your life where you haven't been choosing to follow God, but you would like to? I think the story of this second criminal gives us a lot of hope. Now, there's probably a lot of ways it gives us hope, but I'll just mention two briefly. First of all, we see that it's never too late. Uh, Whether you need to hear that for yourself or for someone you've been praying for for a long time, it's never too late. No matter what you've done in your life or where you are in your life, God can and wants to rescue you. All you have to do is call out to him. He's pursuing you. He's done everything it takes to make your salvation possible, to make it possible for you to belong to him. You just have to turn to him. And for those of us who feel like we've been waiting forever for God to work in the life of someone we know, uh, someone we love, don't lose hope. What an amazing thing to think that God could have saved this criminal at any time in his life, any time. But he chose to wait until the last minute but not because God had forgotten about him or didn't care about him, but because he wanted to use the saving of this man's soul to have an impact on the millions, even billions of people who would read about it in the Bible. God is always on time and his timing always has purpose. Now, the other encouragement we get from this scene is what is offered to us in the sacrifice of Jesus for us on the cross. Jesus uh, tells him that today you will be with me in paradise. It reminds us that Jesus alone is sufficient for us to be made right with God. Jesus dies in our place to take the punishment for our sins, but he also gives his righteousness to us so that we're made completely holy and blameless in his sight. This man had no time to start doing good things to earn God's favor. And yet on that day, Because of his faith in Jesus, God counted him as righteous through that faith, and he was saved. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says that, For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, that in him we might become the righteousness of God. He made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Jesus became sin for this man so that he might become the righteousness of God. And he's done the same for you, and he's done the same for me. For everyone who's weary of trying to earn their way to God or to prove themselves to God and to the people around them. This is good news because it means we can cling to Jesus like this criminal on the cross. We can cling to him and what he's done for us so that like this criminal, we too can be with Jesus. So let me pray that you would be able to believe that uh, today. Father, thank you for this good news of what you have done for us in Jesus uh, to make the forgiveness of our sins possible uh, and to, for, uh, to make it possible for us uh, to be counted righteous, uh, to be counted with the righteousness of Jesus through faith. Would you give us faith today? Uh, give us faith to believe that this is possible and, uh, and to choose to follow you uh, because of what you have done for us. And Father, we do pray for those that... Uh, that we have been praying for a long time uh, that they would come to know you. Uh, Would you help us not to lose heart, uh, but to trust that your timing is perfect, to continue to to pray and to call out to you for their salvation. Uh, Would you hear our prayers? uh, Would you you rescue them? Would you call them to yourself uh, by your mercy and by your grace, uh, like you've done for us? Uh, thank you. Thank you for what you've done for us. Thank you for what uh, you uh, you will do for them. So in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.